A group in the block Arewa Lives Matter has demanded an immediate end to the killings in the 19 states in the north. At a press conference to press home their demand, the group, while acknowledging the effort of the current administration in tackling insecurity in the region at the beginning, lamented that it has rested on its oars. The convener, Adamu Halilu, asked that the hardship of the security architecture, the headship rather, of the security architecture be rejigged. He stated that if nothing is done in the next 14 days, the group will occupy all the houses of assembly in the 19 northern states. Joining us now is the convener Arewa Lives Matter, Adamu Halilu. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Why the choice of Arewa Lives Matter? Tell us about this group. Um, most of the killings have been going on in northern Nigeria. And uh, from the statistics, the chances of you being killed is eight times higher in the north. So it's only, it's only fair we, we mention this based on statistics. Don't get me wrong, I'm not uh, ethnocentric. I'm, I'm a Nigerian and I know lots of people have lived their lives all this while in the north and never even bothered to own properties in other parts of the north, the south, the east and the likes of them. So it has nothing to do with Harry, where we're not trying to create a, a colony or another form of segregation. No, it's, it's just coincidental that most of the killings have been happening in the north. So the choice, Ariwa, has to do with uh, the northern governors, the 19 states, and, you know, sitting up and doing the right thing. So it really has nothing to do with other states and uh, trying to make it sound like it's the whole country, it's unfair. So it's just, uh, it's just necessary we use Ariwa because all these um, 19 states are in northern Nigeria. What do you hope to achieve with this movement? Um, we actually need, um, it's more like a wake up call. We're trying to tell them that we can't stick home while we get kidnapped, raped, and killed. As I said earlier on, the chances of you surviving in, in, in northern Nigeria, it's quite slim compared to other parts of the country. We try to put pressure in those governing us. The thing I, I understand with Nigerians is we, we are actually blessed. We have all the resources, intellect, and everything. We've been able to fight things like Ebola, COVID-19, and all those things successfully. Why can't we put an end to banditry, kidnapping, and all those things? It's, it, it, it goes to show that there's no willpower. So we're just trying to make them sit up. So I, I, think, I think they need to know that we're not scared. They need to know that we're no more, we're, we're no more going to sit back and be silent and, uh, and let them be comfortable. Apart from the security agents, have you appealed to traditional rulers for support in, in this um, a movement? Well, if you've gone through our prayer, um, I think we, we've been very uh, pragmatic. We've, we've talked about uh, um, security forces. We've talked about um, traditional rulers, the councillors, the chairman. We've talked about even the joint tax box and every other person and individuals coming together. I do understand the fear where people don't want to like, uh, give out information because you never know who you can trust. Um, most disturbing part of it is I, I noticed um, in the news uh, 23 people that volunteered to assist with the banditry in Zamfara State were killed in cold blood. So you, 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 you kind of find it hard to, 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 to trust anyone. It's lots of stories about um, uh, complacency from every angle, the emirs, the military, and the rest. So you don't know who to trust. But what we're trying to say is the, the, the president really needs to call on everyone to order. The state governors, I, they've been earning a lot on security votes. I, I must say I, must say I, I commend some of them. They've been doing tremendously well. The, the police have been doing a great job, but I, I think they've not been funded enough. The military actually have very lovely professionals there. So if you don't, don't have those that have the willpower to one fight this and put an end to it, then I think it's, it's time the hierarchy does something and they, they change them and they put some others how, that are willing to do this. Really, really how effective really can you be? How effective really can you be with this pandemic and the restrictions that comes with it? Well, we were trying our best as law-abiding citizens. We're trying our best to see find a way to go around it. But, but there's, when there's a will, there's always going to be a way. We had a press release, even though we had numbers there, we were able to to observe um, the social distance and we're able to have as as, as much as um, 15 persons only inside the hall while others were outside. So we're trying to see how we can go about it. If we try to occupy the Northern assemblies, and uh, we try to observe social distances and face masks and all that. 
well, there, there comes a time that that won't really matter anymore when, when everyone is just coming in. But we'll try as much as possible to hope we put the right pressure on them to do the right thing. They have two weeks to buckle up and do the right thing. So what we're, saying, what we're trying to say is it's, it's a last resort. We've been pushed so hard to the wall and um, there's no going back. We, we, we're, not, we're not going to relent. We have so many organizations coming in. We have others already on ground. So it's a, it's a coalition of every meaning Nigerian. And you'll be All surprised. Right, it's not just the North. It's, it's, it's the whole country. We need to do something really, really fast about insecurity. Mr. Halilu, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.